Sunday morning. With us today is Dr. Sky, and he brightens up our Sunday mornings because he, he tells us about things that expands our mind. His real name is Steve Cates. Well, Steve, uh, tell me what's going on this weekend. Well, good morning, Sunday morning to everyone listening. John, we're jam-packed with information here. First of all, let's talk about a strange thing that happened with a Boeing satellite, which had apparently exploded and just disappeared off the uh, space radar screen, so to speak. It's known as a Boeing Intelsat satellite, known as IS-33. That particular satellite, Intelsat 33E, was positioned at 60 degrees east longitude at about 22,000 miles in space. Now, here we go. This particular satellite, nobody really knows why was the satellite destroyed. We don't think anybody you know, shot a rocket at it. Theory is that this may have had some propellant tank issues, which caused it somehow to just break up into a bunch of pieces. And that's kind of sad because I'm sure, unless they had a Lloyd's of London insurance policy on this, uh, isn't that strange, John, that we're hearing more about these things well, and sad to report a Boeing product? Steve Cates, uh, number one, you know, we had yesterday uh, uh, General Teichert, uh, who was yes. uh, with Space Command. And we right. asked him the same questions, and we came down to three answers. Either mm -hmm. it got shot down by uh, okay. uh, the Russians, the Ukrainians, not the Ukrainians, the Russians, the Chinese, whoever has the ability to do that in outer space, because that's the, that's the real reason for Space Command to exist, protecting our satellites. Yes. Uh, or number two, got hit with a, by an asteroid. And mm -hmm. number three, that is self exploded is i would say the least possibility because i don't think that's happened to any other boeing uh, or any other satellites and the number yes. four is that the fact that it's a boeing that's another uh nail in the coffin well john i know the general knows much more about this and we go on to his side of the equation here we're giving us those possibilities but it's interesting you're right Satellites just don't summarily just simply explode in space. But if it is a propellant issue, we probably will never know. But again, the whole purpose, as we all know about Space Force, the guardians of outer space, is to find out if there's any nefarious activities going on where, in other words, other countries could destroy satellites in orbit. That is the purpose behind Space Force, well, as we all know. I'll, I'll give you the generals uh, and my other friends. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no treaty in outer space right now. There is no right. treaty, and uh, uh, the, the strong survive, and that's one of the reasons I went to war with AM radio to survive, because if one of our enemies destroys our communication satellites and our GPS satellites, guess what? Your Lord iPhone God. is not worth two cents, uh, what was the old expression, two cents Chinese money? Right. It's not worth a yuan of yeah, anything like the, that versus a dollar. Yeah, yeah. You, I hope you have AM radio in the car or AM radio uh, because it's the only way to find out what the heck is going on. And a salute to you, John, and others that have been fighting to keep AM radio in vehicles, new manufactured. We now know, of course, and we're trying to educate the public, as you are, the necessity for this. But here we go. We've got a whole bunch of things to talk about, and we'll try to get them through here. We find out that we talk aviation, too. And here's something interesting. Maybe many people may not know this. Our fleet of B-2 bombers, some of them have actually been positioned, laying, landing and taking off in a place in Australia called Darwin. And their sole purpose, as they've been talking about in fighting a war against the Houthis, is that they've actually been sent there. This isn't like, you know, totally confirmed, but a good on the intel side say that they've been dropping these GBU-57 massive ordnance penetrator bombs. But what's interesting about that is, the B-2 is extremely stealth, as many people may not know. A two-person crew can fly it. And the new version, John, that they've just come out with, a very secret type of aircraft, is alleged to be able to fly under artificial intelligence. So just to let everybody know that our Air Force, of course, has watchful eyes on people like that that are doing some things against freedom. And isn't that fascinating that the B-2s are now able to fly and possibly uh, do what we just described? Interesting. Well, I guess they're upgrading the B-2s because those things, most of those things have been around for, you're sitting down, 40 or 50 years. Oh, you bet. And I remember a long time ago interviewing on shows that I've done in the past, John, 
The original iteration of those was the flying wings of the 19 late 40s and 50s, both a jet version and a propeller version, which then, of course, gave us the future technology that we have today. It's just amazing. And we go back to 1903 with Wilbur and Orville Wright. It's an understatement to say how fast technology has, of course, expanded not only in aviation, but in space. But we do. Uh, talk what about else? Is, what else week. is going on out there? Well, we got a mystery of the week, John. Real quickly, here's a question: Why do the planets in the solar system revolve around the sun in a counterclockwise rotation? Well, nobody really knows the answer, but what astronomers think is this is probably true. When the solar system formed billions of years ago, that solar nebula obviously started to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. Sounds like a simple answer. But we find out two objects in the solar system are very strange. Venus rotates backwards, meaning clockwise, and the planet Uranus is knocked on its side by about 98 degrees. But if you sat on top of the sun and looked straight down, this particular solar system rotates in a counterclockwise rotation, but not necessarily do all the other exoplanetary systems around other stars do the same. So that's an interesting thing. Nobody really, really knows. But to learn much more, John, what do we say? Always go to the Dr. Sky Experience here at WABCRadio.com. Talking what? Astronomy, space, aviation, and weather with other positive interviews about American exceptionalism as we wind up moving toward a very historic election just days away. Thank well, you, that's going to determine the future of the world. You better believe it, folks. So everybody needs to what? We don't normally talk politics with you on this particular program, but... Go out there and vote because you're so right, John. The future of this country and the world. The free world, I've said to me, and I really feel like that, the free world depends on the White House and a strong leader to keep it free. Absolutely. Like you say, and others say it just as proudly. Truth, justice, and the American American way. way. Thank you, John. Have a good time. Okay, you have a mystery of the week yet? Well, I did talk about that. Okay, that was the so. Okay, I understand. Well, Dr. Sky, sure. Steve Cates, enjoy the, the rest of the weekend. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Eden Memorial Chapels understands Jewish funerals can take many forms. Some are orthodox, while others are more conservative or of a reform nature. There's no one better. With services close to all New York and New Jersey cemeteries, Eden Memorial Chapels offer fair and balanced pricing and can provide easy transfer of you and your loved ones to Israel. While you're grieving, they're here to take care of all the details so that you deal with less bureaucracy and have more peace of mind. Go to EdenMemorial.com. That's EdenMemorial.com. Memorial.com.